welcome back to G-Sphere training. This training session is about shrinkage with G-Sphere. Shrinkage function is a James Stein estimation process called estimation with quadratic loss and it's used for a couple of purposes. Let's navigate to step four where those shrinkage functions exist. Here we see the multi-sampling that we've applied from the, one of the previous chapters. From those multi-sample periods, now we have our different capital market assumptions, the return value and the risk value and the correlation values. The shrinkage functions apply to only the return and risk values. They don't impact the overall time series and correlations of the assets. You can see we have different shrinkage functions which can be set to returns and to risk independently of one another. They range from none, which is just the raw data, whether that's historical data or composite data, all the way to average which then just gives the average of all of the assets that we've contemplated with the exception of cash. Now, applying different levels of shrinkage impacts the portfolio in several different ways. One, shrinkage is a great tool to help get rid of historical outliers from the optimization process and thus make the um, asset allocation result more pragmatic and more forward-looking. For example, from our sample periods, we could see here in rows 3 and 4, I've got a fund that made 15% and a fund that lost 12%. Now, surely you're not going to invest in anything if your real expectation for that asset is it losing 12%. So what do we do about it? A number of different ways of dealing with it. One, of course, you could manually enter what you feel is a proper return expectation for that asset. If you don't have those kinds of expectations, or you don't feel that that's a strength of your investment process, the shrinkage function is a great tool to go ahead and take care of those, those types of problems. So I clicked on update to revert back to the historical data. Again, watch this 15% and this negative 12% as I bump up the different levels of return shrinkage, and they're both going to converge towards that negative 6 or the uh, 6%. Okay, so starting with none, very small, 15 becomes 14, negative 12 is negative 10. That's small, I'm between 12 and negative 6. At medium, I'm between 9 and negative 1. And you can see now that the, uh, because the average is 6, this row 4 is further away from that average than row 3 is. Therefore, row 4 is going to be converging at a faster pace towards that average than row 3. This is why it's such a handy tool to help shape up historical outliers in the optimization. At a strong setting, we're between 2.5 and, and just under 8. And then very strong, we're at 5 and 6.5. And so let's go ahead and run this optimization with the results set to very strong. In doing so, we've basically allowed only a minimum amount of the return differences amongst these different assets to get manifest into the optimization process. Therefore, we're inherently shifting greater focus of the optimization back to diversification as well as to these risk values. And frankly, since historical returns tend to be fairly lousy predictors of future returns, that's really where you want the focus of the optimization to take place. Okay, so here's our asset allocation result based on these settings. I'm going to go ahead and click edit and let's make some changes to these settings and see how it impacts these results. One interesting way of running G-Sphere is to run both the return and the risk shrinkage all the way to average. So now as I run this optimization, I'll be producing a portfolio that's entirely based, or where the asset allocation results are entirely based on the diversification impact of any of these different assets. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. Now, because G-Sphere 
uses the performance functions of these assets as the different lengths of any of these vectors. Now, equalizing all those performance functions does inherently mean that all the different vector lengths are the exact same. So, do you remember seeing that this Ridex Managed Futures Fund had the largest allocation weight of any asset in the portfolio? Let's just turn back to the visualization and you could better see why. See how it has a more unique space in the portfolio and since it's basically given the same performance as the rest of the assets and the result is entirely focused on the diversification impact of these assets, it commands a larger allocation weight because it's adding more to the portfolio than any other asset. Let's go back into the edit process, look at shrinkage from a couple of different angles so we completely understand the implications of using shrinkage. Okay, so I'm going to update the historical data to true up the data back to those historical numbers. And now, let's just um, talk about using shrinkage as a tool to make portfolios more, con more conservative or more aggressive. So if we've done our job successfully in selecting assets and making good emblematic samples for those assets or representative samples for those assets in our, our current market sentiment, then there's going to be value in these different returns. Now, it doesn't really have to be value in the magnitude of the returns, but certainly in the relative ranges of the returns. So the more confidence we have in these values, the less we want to apply shrinkage because the more we think this is actually what's going to happen. The less confidence we have in these values, the more we, we want to apply shrinkage to help those values get normalized. In addition, because G-Sphere optimizes on the basis of diversification, we now have the ability to separate diversification from being just some subcomponent of risk and making its own dial on your dashboard. So the more we shrink return and risk, the more we emphasize diversification. To say that a couple of different ways, the more we shrink returns, the more we're inherently emphasizing the remaining two variables, risk or diversification. So to make an aggressive portfolio, we could shrink the return or the, the risk values stronger and therefore we're putting more emphasis on the returns thus making the portfolio more aggressive and of course diversification is always going to be there for us with G-Sphere. Typically because historical returns tend to be fairly poor predictors of future returns a common way to use G-Sphere would be to use higher levels of return shrinkage and lower levels of risk shrinkage because risk values do tend to be better predictors of future risk than the returns are. However, diversification is a better predictor of future diversification than either returns or risk. So, depending on you know your, your sanity test for these different return values and your confidence in those values and then your disposition as to making the portfolio more conservative meaning more return shrinkage or more aggressive being less return shrinkage and more risk shrinkage you arrive at your final settings and guys just also use your judgment about this make sure that things are passing the sanity test and you think yeah, these seem like reasonable capital market assumptions to me. So using the shrink is just an expedient tool to help tilt the portfolio one way or the other and, and also make those outliers come into line, make the results more pragmatic in a very systemic process, which is very compliance friendly because it's such a, you know, a very uh, systemic process. And the last part of shrinkage is, is also generally the more shrinkage which is applied the less we're letting assets dominate other assets you know the, the more our performance functions our utility functions are similar to one another generally the more assets are going to be included in the optimization result so you can also use this as a means to control the concentration of the portfolio so you can see here 
using very strong and very strong, I ended up investing in 16 different assets. Let's just see what happens if I use a small and a small. And I'll bet you, yep, our asset count is down from 16 now to 12. So shrinkage to recap, it's a very powerful function, very easy to use. And we know it's not something that you're probably used to using, but it's a, a very credible process invented in 1961, and it's used by other top optimization systems. Its main purposes are to tilt portfolios between more aggressive and more conservative, manage your concentration of the portfolio, make sure your input results are very pragmatic and forward-looking, and just generally produce portfolios that can shift your, your disposition between risk, return, and diversification, respectively. Thanks for listening.